Welcome back to another episode of Shifty's 49ers Talk. It's your boy Shifty coming at you with another one. So in this video, we're going to talk about three players I believe the 49ers could still potentially add to the team in addition to two players who've played for the 49ers before who we may want to add to the team for the upcoming 2022 season. Now, before we get into my list of players, let me preface by saying any of these contracts or any of these potential signings would come down to the fact that we would need to either cut or trade Jimmy Garoppolo and get his contract off the books. Let's not forget we also have to pay our rookie class, which is expected to cost anywhere between seven to eight million dollars for 2022. Now, the first player I'm gonna talk about is gonna be a wide receiver. Now, why would we sign a wide receiver? Our wide receiver room at the current moment is fairly full at that. So the couple of reasons why is if let's say if someone gets hurt during training camp, hopefully not, but that could happen. Or else if a uh, certain someone decides that he really, really still doesn't want to play for the 49ers. So the player I'm talking about that we could bring in is going to be Julio Jones. Now look, I know that he's definitely a little bit older. He's 33 years old. So he's not ancient by any means but look he's been around the league for 11 years so he's definitely not who he once was he's a definitely a bigger name than what he is as a player right now but if we look at julio jones's career in two seasons two years he was a first team all pro both of those times was when Kyle Shanahan was the offensive coordinator with the Falcons. Now, of course, I wouldn't be expecting that version of Julio Jones, but my point here to say is, look, he knows the offense through and through. He could essentially come in, hit the ground running, and the only big thing that we'd really have to adjust to is the chemistry with Trey Lance. But look, again, if someone gets hurt or if someone doesn't want to play, there's for sure an opening for some targets. Maybe Julio looks to come into a team that's also very competitive and give him a chance to get a ring which he does not have yet in his NFL career. The next player on my list is actually a player who I've talked about a couple of times on this channel and bringing in this player would be dependent on if Alex Mack does decide to retire. He still hasn't fully made up his mind yet. The longer it goes on, the longer I'm leaning towards him coming back because I feel like he really wouldn't want to screw the team over by waiting for just before the regular season. Be like, hey, by the way, I'm not playing. So the guy who I would potentially bring in if Mac retires, that would be J.C. Treader. He's a guy who's been around the NFL for a number of years, about nine years in the league, played for Green Bay. He's played for Cleveland. He's played in some big playoff games. He played in similar systems. Mike McCarthy very much ran like a West Coast type scheme, something along the lines of what Kyle Shanahan runs. So I don't think he would be a major adjustment period. Not only that, he's a veteran guy. He could really help to mentor the young guys like Donovan West, like Jason Poe, even younger guys like Jake Brendel too. So that would be a really, really solid option. You know, I don't think he's going to be the best center in the league, but he's someone who can come in and basically not screw things up, really would be a solid placeholder. Again, that's if Alex Mack decides to retire, which I certainly hope he doesn't. I think having a year to mentor guys like Donovan West, Jason Poe would be huge for their development moving forward. And I believe West in particular does have the potential to be a starter in this league. The third free agent that I'm going to talk about is going to be a tight end. Now, why would we potentially bring in a tight end? Well, I think if there's an injury to, let's say, Dwelly or Werner or, heaven forbid, George Kittle, uh, we could definitely use the depth at tight end. We really only have three guys, although we did just sign Choi Fumagalli. He is very much an unknown, much more unknown than guys like Dwelly or Werner. So should there be an injury, I think this is someone who could come in and really really help with the team. That's going to be Eric Ebron. So someone who is quite athletic, has definitely had his struggles after being the 10th overall pick back in 2014 with the Lions. But I think someone who really has had a, some productive years in the NFL, should anything happen to some of our tight ends, I think he's someone who, you know, the Niners could definitely use to exploit some mismatches. 
things of that nature. But someone who'd be a decent option to bring in similar along the lines of like a Jordan Reed who we brought in a couple of years back. Although maybe, you know, Ebron isn't as accomplished as Jordan Reed. He definitely doesn't come with the same injury history that Jordan Reed has. So I think it'd be a very interesting option to see what Kyle Shanahan could do with a guy like Eric Ebron, who would definitely look to go to a situation where it's going to be competitive, a chance where he has to play in playoff games, possibly win a ring. So I think that'd be a really interesting pickup again should anything happen to any of our tight ends. We are going to end off this video by talking about two players who've played for the 49ers before who we could potentially bring back. Now, the first player is going to be wide receiver Emmanuel Sanders. Now, why would we bring him back? Well, to me, the reasons would be the exact same reasons why we potentially bring in a Julio Jones if someone gets injured or else if a certain star player decides that he doesn't want to play for the 49ers this year. I think bringing in Sanders, he's a veteran. He knows this offense. He knows most of the guys in the locker room. He's very familiar with them, having played with us in 2019. And he's someone who has still been very, you know, productive in recent seasons with the Saints and with the Buffalo Bills. So I think that would be a very solid signing, again, if someone gets hurt or decides to not want to play. Now, the second player I'm going to talk about is safety Jaquaski Tart. I know I've talked about him a ton on this channel. But to me, he's someone we could bring back if one of our safeties gets hurt or potentially if some of the safeties just really don't live up to the expectations of the coaching staff. I really do believe this coaching staff wants to give George Odom, Tavarius Moore, or Talanoa Hufanga a legitimate chance to win and earn that starting position opposite of Jimmy Ward at safety. But let's say if one of those guys gets hurt or maybe they're just not living up to the, yeah, the expectations of what they expect, Tart can come in. He knows the defense as well as anybody. He'll be able to come in. He's a guy who, although he's not a splashy playmaker by any means, um, he's someone who's typically in the right place at the right time and is someone that he's solid and that you can count on to make the right play for the most part. Alrighty guys, so I'm going to leave it there. Those are my lists of players we could bring in as free agents or possible players that we could bring back who've played for the 49ers before. Love to hear your thoughts on my list of players or maybe throw out some names that you guys have been thinking of that we could potentially bring in to help upgrade the roster. And I'm going to leave it there, but you know I'm going to say two things. The butt counts, and I'll catch y'all on the flip side.